Let's consider a vehicle that moves from concrete onto some grass. And as it hits the grass, it slows down. Now the right hand wheel is gonna slow down before the left hand wheel. So as that first wheel digs into the grass, the whole vehicle is going to move around. And it's only when the two wheels are on that grass or the muddy bit again, that it then moves off at a constant velocity. And this is exactly what happens in refraction. This rather space age looking device is the kind of thing that actually maybe the teachers may have hidden from you. So what we have here is a rather nice quality ray box. And what it is is just a big lamp in the back. Uh, we have a, a lens which helps focus the light. And what I'm gonna do here is put in a single slit. So this gives us a beam of light. So this shows a ray of light and the direction in which it moves. What I can do with that ray of light is I can send it through various materials. So for example, we might have something which is fairly optically dense, like this uh, piece of glass here. And as I shine that light through a block, provided it hits it head on, uh, so at an angle of instance of zero degrees, and I'll talk about that in, in a couple of minutes, um, the light passes straight through. As I rotate the block, what we see is a light inside that starts to bend. And this effect here is what we call refraction. So I'd like to go through the theory about refraction in a bit more detail. On the left, I have this uh, Ripple Free app running, and what we have is waves that are moving in a fairly fast medium, and they're hitting uh, a denser medium down at the bottom, and they're slowing down. Now, perhaps this might be when you have a wave maybe moving from air into glass, perhaps, or it could be any kind of medium. It could even be a vacuum into the air. And if we think about a ray of light, what I have here are the wave fronts, but what I'm gonna do is the ray to actually show the direction of that. As the ray comes in, it's going to hit the surface. And what we can do is we can draw on an angle at 90 degrees to the surface. Okay, I'm just gonna do that above and below uh, the boundary where they meet. And I'm gonna call this a normal. So hopefully there shouldn't be too much here that you haven't done at GCSE. Now the ray of light that comes in is what we call the incident ray. And therefore there's a certain angle of incidence i now as that light comes in a bit like the the car that we had before moving from concrete onto grass it's going to bend towards normal as it slows down and we can see that again on the app on the left hand side so i'm going to just draw this ray of light in here so what we have now is something that's been refracted and this ray i'm just putting a an arrow to show which way it's going is what we call the refracted ray and we also then have an angle of refraction, little r. Now, if we measure i and r, and we can sort of uh, measure these for a whole variety of angles of incidence, what we can then do is work out the relationship between the two. And what we find out is that sine i is proportional to sine r. Now, we can write this as sine i, or sine of the angle of incidence, divided by sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant and we call this constant little n and this little n here is what we call the refractive index and you might have a refractive index between air and glass there might be another one for glass to air or air to a vacuum or glass to perspex or whatever it may be and this thing here this relationship here is what we call Snell's law and that means if you know the angle of incidence and you know the angle of refraction you can work out this constant here. And it also turns out that this value little n is equal to the ratio of the speed of the wave in one medium to the other. So n is also equal to the speed, in this case in air, divided by the speed of that wave in the glass. And this is really only a case for where we have that interface here. And you'll see that if we go from glass to air, the value is gonna be equal to one over n. So Snell's law is something that you need to know about in terms of refraction. And we're gonna look at this in a bit more detail now when we look at something called total internal reflection.